Austin Channing Brown, I'm still here, black dignity in a world made for whiteness. Step into the shoes of Austin Channing Brown, author of I'm Still Here, Black Dignity in a World Made for Whiteness, as she unveils her journey of navigating a predominantly white landscape, constantly wrestling with stereotypes and prejudices. In this powerful book summary, you will gain a vital comprehension of the significance of race, the importance of acknowledging one's own biases, and the significance it holds today to tell the true history of black citizens in America. Uncover the exhausting reality of being a black individual in a white majority workplace and be inspired by the hope and perseverance found in Austin's personal experiences in striving for racial justice. Austin Channing Brown's Journey of Realizing the Significance of Race Austin Channing Brown's memoir details her coming of age in a predominantly white education system and how her race shaped the way people saw her. Her name, chosen by her parents to elicit perceived success in a society that privileges whiteness and maleness, was only the beginning. Growing up, she had been exposed to the notion of color blindness where people pretended not to see racial differences at all. However, even with this ideology, she was still often met with ignorance and racism, with incidents ranging from racial slurs to her teacher's admission of making a racist assumption. These events made her realize how deeply ingrained racism was in society, stretching far beyond blatantly racist actions. Awakening to Racial Injustice At a young age, Austin embraced black culture through her mother's move to a predominantly black neighborhood, a welcoming black church, and black teachers in college. However, a harrowing trip to the South taught her that many Americans still struggle to come to terms with black history. The trip was designed to teach students about slavery, but the guides offered a sanitized version of history, and even claimed that the enslaved were happy. The black students expressed their anger, while the white students were inclined to believe what they'd been told. The visit to a museum on the history of lynching intensified the tension. Some white students were shocked, but others wanted to distance themselves. However, one student felt that it was time for her to get involved in racial justice work. Austin also realized that working toward racial justice was her calling. Being Black at a White Majority Company In the book, the author shares her personal experience as a black woman working in a white majority organization. She explains how, despite claims of inclusivity, the reality of the workplace can be draining and alienating for people of color. The author highlights the pervasive microaggressions that black employees face daily, such as being mistaken for a non-staff member, having co-workers touch their hair without permission, and being assumed to be the resident expert on race-related matters. These incidents, while seemingly harmless, can pile up, leading to feelings of exhaustion and isolation. The author also describes the added stress of being censured by superiors for standing up for oneself or being perceived as not being a team player. Ultimately, the book sheds light on the need for greater awareness and understanding of racial dynamics in the workplace and the importance of creating truly inclusive work environments where everyone feels valued. The Burden of White Guilt In her book, Austin draws attention to the emotional toll that trying to educate white people about racism has on black individuals. While white guilt can be a sign of introspection and a willingness to confront prejudice, it often turns into white fragility and leaves black people overwhelmed. Austin's personal experience of being on the receiving end of white guilt is a testament to this. Even though her work is centered on promoting racial equality, she suffered a backlash when leading a trip to a black neighborhood in Chicago. Despite making her best effort to introduce the group to the community, the fear of gun violence consumed them, and one angry father wrongly accused her of being in charge of the danger. This incident highlights the limitations of trying to help those who are unwilling to confront their prejudices. While Austin's work has been successful in getting white individuals to think about race, the cost of the burden falls entirely on black people. America's Unspoken Truth The history that's taught in America isn't honest enough, particularly regarding the true history of black citizens. America needs to do better by facing the horrors of slavery and acknowledging the hard-fought civil rights movement, rather than celebrating it without truly understanding it. 
The essayist James Baldwin spoke of the constant rage he felt over the treatment of black people, a reality that still holds true today. Acknowledging this truth and facing it head-on is the only way to create a better future, as honesty is the first step towards progress and change. The Fear of Living in a White-Centered World In this poignant account, Austin highlights the fear that black people feel when living in a predominantly white society. Her incessant check-ins with her husband serve as a way to confirm their safety, amid the rampant injustices towards those of color. Austin's cousin Dolan's story outlines the many ways in which the system failed him, accentuating the grave consequences of being a black American. The book's focal point is to shed light on the real challenges black people face in a country that claims to offer equal opportunities. From the Ferguson protests, where the police presence was extreme and unwarranted, to the Charleston shooting, where a peaceful sanctuary was violated by white supremacy, Austin provides a detailed account of the dangers faced by black Americans. Despite it all, standing in solidarity with her church community, Austin discovers a new will to carry on. Believing in Gradual Progress In Between the World and Me, Ta-Nehisi Coates highlights how long slavery lasted, and how the fight for racial equality continues. A true equal society may seem impossible, but progress can still be made over generations. Racial reconciliation must result in real, structural change where powerless people have a seat at the table. The work being done around race issues can be superficial, but we can slowly work towards a better future by never giving up hope and steadily moving towards the ultimate goal. As we journey alongside Austin Channing Brown in I'm Still Here, we discover the impact of living in a world that often favors whiteness, the power of questioning our own biases, and the necessity of honest reflection on America's painful racial history. The importance of moving beyond tokenism to achieve true structural change is clear, with a focus on equal representation and acknowledgement of the unmatched experiences of black individuals navigating today's society. While it may seem like a daunting, distant aspiration, each progressive step taken builds a path towards racial justice and a more equitable society for future generations.